Israeli woman was a very gentle gentleman. He's very friendly, you know, he's a calm personality that he just brings across. He was quite a reserved man, very, uh, very intelligent. He was a person who really pushed. He pushed the boundaries, he pushed the limits. He, he, he was a person who was never satisfied with, with what was. He was always trying to find something better. Well, I think if you start tracing the history back to Charles Warman, that uh, developed the first Warman slurry pump in 1938 in Kalgoorlie, he acknowledged the fact that uh, due to high wear, he had to come up with a different design to allow people to actually have replaceable liners. The, the current models at that time were, were imported, I think, from the States largely, and they were wearing out very quickly and costing miners a lot of money. In the past, slurry pumps were just derivatives of water pumps designed uh, with classical methods that have been around probably for a hundred years. He was able to develop uh, an alloy that is the really the, the, the base of the, of the uh, invention because by understanding the growth of uh, metal grains in an alloy, he actually produced a very hard wearing pump for a very difficult and abrasive environment. The pump that Charles designed was transformative in the sense that it did last longer and it allowed the plant to run um, longer periods without having to stop the maintenance. In the early 50s, uh, there was a lot of uh, heavy mineral sands mines opening up on the east coast of Australia. So Charles saw an opportunity to service that market. He asked one of his top draftsmen, Dennis Martin, would he mind coming to Sydney to, to start the Warman industry here? So Dennis Martin loaded up his family into the car. They drove over from Kalgoorlie to Sydney. Well, I think the expansion of his business was obviously uh, driven by customer demand for the product. Again, the industry was still going through uh, a, a growth stage, both again in size of the mines, the number of people employed, and hence the size of pumps. So, you know, the size of the pumps that he was building or his company was building was growing to suit that market. It was the first uh expansion of Warman from Australia was, I think, to, ja to Japan. We found this Niso Steel, a company who became the first manufacturers of Warman pumps in Japan. So in the 60s and 70s, uh, we had licensees in the Philippines, Malaysia, Hungary, Japan. Later in the 80s, started a license in China. In 1970s, we opened the factory in, in, in America, in Victor, Wisconsin, Madison, Wisconsin. Within a year, the Borman pump was preferred by a survey of mining managers in the northern United States. They picked Borman pump within one year as the best pump for mining industries in the world. Borman developed very gradually, but very assuredly, and never stepped back. Wherever we went, we went forward. We were always striving not just to sell things, but to sell the best thing. We always wanted to be top dogs. There was a great team spirit. Uh, there was always this desire to, uh, to conquer world markets. I saw a lot of growth happening and then in later years uh, did a lot of market development myself in South America and Asia. There's probably as many Warman pumps uh, together, if you take number two, three, four and five players in the market and you time their full installed base by five, that's how many Warman pumps have been installed. So it's absolutely massive throughout the world. To be at the forefront of your field, um, I mean, no matter what that field is, uh, be at the forefront globally in your field is, is fantastic. There's, there's nothing like it. If you find a job you love, you'll never work a day in your life. And, and that's what this is. Way is a place where we have the freedom to grow. Um, and every day is interesting and different and uh, we are posed with new challenges. It, it gave you a sense of pride that you're really working on a product that's not just close to the edge, it's at the bleeding edge of technology development. 
There's probably uh, generations of mining and process engineers that uh, have known the Warman pumps and they're there on the plant when they arrive as a young graduate or as a trainee and often they're there when they retire or move on to the next mine and that reputation they take with them. It's tried and trusted. Warman's been around since I was a boy. The first time I stepped into the mining industry many, many years ago. You know, Warman's been a standard and for good reason. In terms of great mining exports, uh, the Warman pump is probably one of the greatest pieces of equipment that we've ever sold around the world. I'm extremely proud to be associated with Weir Minerals. It is an absolutely fantastic company, extremely high quality people, um, fantastic resources, fantastic uh, facilities, and just a wealth of history and ideas that we can tap into to help us with our future developments and future innovations. There's never an end point in which you can say, I have, I have invented the perfect material or I have invented the perfect pump. And the customers continue to demand improvements all the time and the competition continues to pressure us. We're constantly developing um, new materials. We spend a lot of money on R&D to make the pump and its performance better. We're constantly upgrading it to perform better in applications around sites. The way we stay ahead is through innovation. We innovate with our materials technology, we innovate with our hydraulics, we innovate in the way we go to market. We have new service centres, so we improve our regional reach and coverage all over the world every year. I think Cinetrex is the next big thing for the warm and pump. It's, it's an enabler. It will allow us to enhance the product. Cinetrex is a way of collecting performance data. So we're collecting vibrations and temperatures, pressures, the pump speed, of course. And we use those measurements to create insights to help us determine, one, how the pump is operating, operating continuously with less downtime, and two, how long we think until the pump will need its next service. And ultimately, that just saves the customer money. What this means to the mine sites is it'll give them peace, more peace of mind. It'll allow them to better plan for unforeseen shutdowns, so they'll be able to schedule in their jobs better and foresee what's going on inside the pump and what's happening. This is a next step for the Warman pump. I think the great thing about Weir Minerals is we're innovating in a number of different areas, and this is one area where we're going to augment the technology, deliver new value to our customers in product technology, but also in our ability to service our customers and drive value in their business through our service arm as well. If you look at the previous 80 years, it started with a pump. We still have pumps. If you take those underlying principles and overlay on top of those the latest technology enhancements and developments and materials and digitization and connectedness, and you start to have products which perform better and better and better. Yeah, change is funny. I mean, you know, sometimes the more things change, the more they stay the same. And in a lot of ways, the, the warm and pump is, it's got the same elements that it had when Charlie designed it. Perhaps the time that uh, Charles Warman was growing up in Kalgoorlie and studying at the School of Mines is the same now as we're seeing with the boom in lithium batteries, electric vehicles, and how the mining industry is rapidly filling the demand in those commodities. And I'm sure if Charles Warman had been around today, he would be investing in that in some way. It's been a really exciting journey being part of this team at Weir Minerals. There's such a big opportunity to make a significant impact both from an internal product perspective but also on how we add value to our customers and so that makes it exciting and great to be a part of. The Warman Pump is a continuously evolving product. We invest a significant amount of revenue into research and development. We don't rest on our laurels, we continuously improve. So what the future holds is to remain the preeminent slurry pump supplier in the world. I think the Warman pump has demonstrated it's been a market leader, uh, serving our customers well for the last 80 years. I think it's going to be there for the next 80 years doing the same. From where I'm sitting now, I, I definitely believe we can get to 150. It's going to be up to us as leaders of this organisation to make sure that we keep that pressure on and keep on developing and keep on listening to our customers to see what we need to develop and how we want to push this forward. 